Hey friends! Horse girls. <sighs> <laughs> Taylor? <laughs> I'm sorry, I was, I was feeling sassy. It says eggs. It says eggs and sausage ate. <laughs> <sighs> That's not the cryptid we're talking about today. We could cover that another time. Okay. God. I'll be quiet. This is ghost emoji, and I'm I'm done. <laughs> no, I'm already done. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm being silly. This is Taylor. I'm Becca, and I'm already <laughs> fed up with Taylor's shit this morning. <laughs> what do you mean? I've been perfectly well behaved. Have you? Yeah, it's the only way I know. Well, we're not talking about horse girls. No, we are, however, talking about the Kelpie, which is not a horse girl. No. <laughs> it's not <laughs> yeah we're talking about kelpies which i actually i was not super familiar with them i thought i was and then when i looked them up i realized i had them confused with the hippocamp so um becca this was this was her brainchild why do you love kelpies so much um because they're real creepy and the idea of anything that lures you in with the false sense of like seeming innocent or beautiful or whatever and then tries to drown you and eat you is um not appealing to me but like interesting to me if that makes sense did you have a horse girl phase no i didn't (laughs) i actually don't really like like horses freak me out because they're just big and i remember hearing a lot of stories about people getting trampled when i was young and i remember when we went there was some sort of like horseback riding patch or badge or whatever you could get for Girl Scouts. Mm -hmm. And I remember just being like, I don't want to do this. Like, I want to pet the horse and I want to feed it sugar cubes and I want to go home. I don't want to ride it. I don't want to be one with the horse. And I was like, no, no, I'm okay. Got to make sure you keep your hand flat. Got to keep your hand flat when when they eat it. And they like lick it and they slime it. Mm Mm-hmm. Yep. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> did did you go through a horse phase, Taylor? I did like horses, but I don't think I was like full blown horse girl things. I was horse girl adjacent. That's fair because <laughs> I did ride horses when I was little. More ponies. I rode ponies because I was a small child. I rode a horse one time and it threw me off. Yeah, see, that's what I'm talking <laughs> about. I was not up for that. It threw me off. They didn't realize the horse was actually pregnant, but it was so early on. I don't think they realized it. So every time I like kind of like spurred it to go it was like uh stop kicking me in the baby and then bucked me that seems fair but i had a helmet on my weird shaped head helmet that's good helmet hunt helmet helmet hunting helmet shopping was a nightmare because apparently i have an in-between head so nothing fit it was too tight or too loose and both of those are bad when you're riding a horsey yeah that that makes sense i also uh I feel like the first thing that I felt like I could draw well was a horse head. And so I just drew horse heads on everything. So you were a little <laughs> bit of a horse girl. I did <laughs> have, kidding. I had a, I had a lot of like Barbie horses. I had like a, a Briars horse that I think was my mom's when she was a kid. What's a Briars horse? Is that like a brand? I think so. Maybe it's Bayer. Bri- I think it's Briar. I think of Bayer. I just think of Aspirin. This is my Aspirin horse. They're, like, from the 70s. They were really popular in the 70s and kind of early 80s, and they came in, like, very standard uh, boxes, and they had all the different types of horses and stuff. Did they have, like, a little, like, stand? Because I feel like some of mine had, like, a little hill they would stand on. Uh, maybe, but most of them were able to, like, stand on their own. I don't know. It's, they were kind of, like, the size for a Barbie to ride. Mm Mm-hmm. So they were pretty big. I also played a a good amount of, like, Barbie's horse ranch extravaganza on my grandpa's computer. That's fair. I mean... They were trying to wean me off the Wolfenstein 3D. (laughs) (laughs) Let's play something a little softer. (laughs) No! (laughs) You can't make me play Barbies. Oh, there's horses. Okay. I'll do it. (laughs) All right. I'll do it. Oh, God. Was I a horse girl? I think you might have been. No! I mean, I don't... I don't want to rewrite your personal history, but... Did you ever go to Camp Misty Meadows? No. Okay. That was a Girl Scout thing, and they had horsies. 
my Girl Scout troop was full of all of the popular girls, and so like all of the friends that I had all had their own different troop. Who could, they could just ride at home. No, <laughs> they were in a different troop, Taylor. <laughs> I get so frustrated when you and Ryan decide to, like, take a page out of my, like, turd booklet. Because I'm just like, what are you doing? What is this? I, I can dish it out, but I cannot take it. The troll becomes the trolled. Yeah. This is what I get for being a little shit all the time. Oh, Sorry, Ducky. Whoops. <laughs> Whoops-a-doodle. <laughs> Whoops-a-doodle. <sighs> That's the end of my horse tangent. So anyways, back to Kelpies. We're going to talk about Kelpies today. If you aren't aware of what they are, <laughs> they are not a medium-sized Australian sheepdog, Taylor. They are... <laughs> when I typed in Kelpie, uh, it was either pictures of, like, demon horses or the cute little Australian sheepdog, which is about 31 to 44 pounds on full grown and uh, 15 to 20 inches tall. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> those definitely will not try to drown you and eat you no they'll they'll be good companions man's best friend yes so kelpies are a part of scottish folklore they are a shape-shifting water spirit that lives in the rivers and lakes of scotland and sometimes locks i think they prefer rapid moving water and are repelled by puddles or tepid still water the origin of the belief in malevolent water horses has been proposed as originating in human sacrifice, sacrifices once made to appease gods uh, associated with water. But the narratives about Kelpies also served a practical purpose in keeping children away from dangerous stretches of water and warning young women to be wary of handsome strangers. Um, Kelpies are also particularly active on Sundays, targeting people who probably should have been at church. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Get the sinners and and children and young girls who are looking for a, a hot young boy. Mm-hmm. What's the difference between a lake and a lock? I thought they were the same because I'm ignorant. I actually do not know. Let me look that up real quick. Oh, yeah. Okay. Lock is the Irish, Scot Scottish, Gaelic, and Scots word for a lake or for a sea inlet. Um... Okay, so maybe it's just kind of like a like a like a small bay or something like yeah. that, or a lake, mm -hmm. or salt watery, like a, an old word. So they're not totally sure, but they think that it's probably derived from the Gaelic "calpa" or "calapeach," which means heifer or colt. Since mm -hmm. I don't know if we've gotten to this yet, and you might have an idea on account of all the horse talk, but usually kelpies appear as a like a large horse. So the whole heifer cult thing. They're also able to adopt human forms, though. And, yes. Uh, often, like, I think there's only a few legends where they appear as a, like, a female woman. Uh, normally, they appear as a young man or a, like, an occasionally an old woman, but mostly a horse. Mm-hmm. A horse with wet hooves. I read that sometimes the hooves were backwards. That, too, Yeah. Nasty. Gross. Something about stuff just being backwards. I know there's a certain kind of demon that has, like, they look like normal hands, but then they're backwards. Which you feel like probably wouldn't be too creepy until you go to, like, shake their hand. And they're Oof. like, whoops-a-doodle. My hand's backwards. I'm a demon. Surprise. Which probably was really unfortunate for anyone who was born with that sort of, like... With, like, malformed hands? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because I imagine people are like, you're a demon. And they're like, no, I just, my hands are, are either on the wrong side or they're backwards. Like, I was born with, I don't know what to tell you. Gotta love old, old shitty people. So there are parallels to the general Germanic neck and the Scandinavian Bacahost that have been observed with Kelpies. Um, and the Kelpie of Scottish folklore is a direct parallel to the Bagahastan of Scandinavian folklore. Um, so are those also horses? I think so, yeah. My guess is they're either like large mammals that shapeshift. I didn't really look into that because I was like, eh, we'll just, <laughs> there's a parallel. But there's hypothesis that the Kelpie myth might have originated with the water spouts that can form over the surface of Scottish locks, giving the impression of a living form as they move across the water. 
I read that about water bulls. Oh, really? Yeah. Hmm. Because they were talking about, well, I guess we'll get to that later, but I guess that could be true for any of them. But they were like, we think water bulls are just based on water spouts that just because of the shadows and stuff just look like a bull or some kind of like four-legged animal running around on the water. Um, well, it's usually a, like, lar- it's described as, like, a powerful, large, beautiful black horse. Um, although it has been also said to be a white horse or golden as well. It's just, I think, predominantly it's usually a black horse. Um, they said sometimes it could have a mane of serpents. And I don't know if that's, like, it's kind of, like, surprise gotcha. Because I feel like if you saw a horse that had snakes for a mane, you would be like, hmm, may- maybe not. I read a lot of stuff where um, if you saw, like, uh, sea kelp or, or like, seaweed in their hair, it was supposed to be, like, a it was supposed to tip you off. Yeah, when they're in human form. Oh, when they're in human form. Okay, mm-hmm. I thought I'd read it in horse form as well, but. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. Not. Maybe they just keep their same hair and they're just like, I can't just grow hair, okay? I'm a magical <laughs> evil horse, but when I turn into my human form, I just can't get new hair all the time. I'm not made of hair. I'm made of kelp. So I'm a kelpie. That's not true. <laughs> but um, let's see. Yeah, the hooves are sometimes reversed. Uh, I also read that sometimes the uh, when they were in human form, that they were supposed to maybe keep their hooves, which is kind of how they got that association with Satan. Yeah. Because of the whole hooved thing. But this one, like, there's a lot of variations. So sometimes they're just regular old people with some dirty hair. Sometimes they got weird feet. <laughs> dirty hair and weird feet. <laughs> Fun. Their main, uh, their main MO is Kelpies, like, will kind of, like, entice you to get on their back. And then they ride off into the water with you and either drown you or they would eat you. And it seemed like it was very popular for them to throw your entrails on the water's edge, which is yep rude. <laughs> Lovely. I mean, come on. That's the best part. Oh, <laughs> sick. So, but I guess, like, they could just drown you. But sometimes when they wanted to make it extra yucky, they would they'd throw your, your bits out on the, on the side. There was, like, a, I guess the most common, like, folktale that I saw about it um, was about a Kelpie that tried to steal away ten children, and it could actually, like, extend the length of its back so it could carry more kids. And so it has nine of them up on its back. And then the tenth one, it's petting the horse, and the Kelpie's skin actually becomes kind of like a sticky adhesive, and his hand becomes, like, stuck to him. And a bunch of the stories, the only way he can escape is actually cutting off his fingers is rude Mm -hmm. (laughs) but so he gets out but it's said that the other nine children were ridden into or rode on the horse i guess rode is not the right term because they were probably stuck to him at that point but he takes them into the river or lake and they are drowned a lot of the stories they were like well in some of them it says that they found the innards of one and another one it just says they never saw him again i'm like both are bad Um, yeah neither (laughs) really say like anything good (laughs) happened and then one of them kind of like spiced it up a little bit by being like well the boy who survived had a bible in his pocket and that's why he lives (laughs) i love it and i'm like "Uh, oh okay okay and then that one uh apparently that story some people call it say that one was a water horse rather than a kelpie which confused me because i thought a water horse was a kelpie but apparently it's like a class, like water horses include like hippocamps. Oh gosh, what's it called? There's one called like an ek ushkia, which is pretty much a kelpie, except they're supposed to be more vicious, which I think is weird considering kelpies like drown and eat you. <laughs> yeah, I I mean, that's pretty intense, I feel. <laughs> Can't get much worse than that. But so if we're mixing these up, And you are, like, staunchly water horses, not Kelpie team. We're so sorry. We kind of feel like they're all in the same camp. Yeah. I thought the interesting part of when I was doing, like, my mild research on Kelpies um, 
was the fact that I came across this map that someone had made um, that is basically it shows all of the different like variations of stories because I feel like it's such a common myth in Scotland that apparently each little town or area has like their own version of the myth. Like, like there was one where you'd click on it and they'd be like, legend has it that a Kelpie built this bridge because apparently Kelpies are also like, if you can catch them and, and not tame them, but like steal their bridal. Yeah. If you steal their bridal, you can basically like catch them and make them build things for you because apparently they're excellent builders. They're very strong. So it's not yes. even so much that they're building it, but, like, you can use them to haul all of, like, this heavy rock and stuff like that. But the whole time, they're, like, grouching and being really angry. And a lot of the stories I read about that, if you didn't kill the Kelpie after, like, if you let it go, the Kelpie would usually, like, curse you or try to kill you. Which, kind of, kind of obvious to me, if you yeah. make someone do, like, manual slave labor for several years, and then you're like, all right, here's your bridal back, see you later. You think he's going to yeah. be like, all right, thanks for the bridal. Bye. <laughs> see you later. He's going to be like, I'm going to eat all of your kids. <laughs> and then I'm going to eat you. You made a good point earlier, though. They're usually, when they appear as people, it's usually as, like, a handsome man, or um, some of them, it would be, like, an old man, almost kind of, like, Bigfoot-esque, like I'd seen them described as kind of like hairy and ape-like, which mm -hmm. I thought was really interesting because some of this Kelpie stuff kind of starts to turn into like other cryptids, and I wonder if that's why there aren't as many stories about Kelpie sightings in like modern days, because people are like, well, I didn't see a Kelpie, I saw like a weird hairy dude, and you're like, no, but that could be a Kelpie in human form. Mm -hmm. Or, like, the Loch Ness Monster and stuff like that. Those kind of, like, water horse-type monsters that are supposed to, you know, have kind of, like, a long, like, serpentine tail. Because I didn't find, like, anything real explicit about that with Kelpies. But it did, uh... I saw some, like, short videos and, like, illustrated shorts about folk tales and stuff. And a lot of times it would appear as a horse, but then when it was in the water, it almost looks kind of like a water dragon kind of thing. Which then makes yeah. me think about, like, Nessie and all of those. So. Yeah, Loch Ness is apparently, like, tied to Kelpie myth. Mm -hmm. Which doesn't totally make sense to me, considering the way I've always seen Kelp, like, Loch Ness represented doesn't look like a kelpie but you know that's why i'm wondering if it's just kind of like transformed over time probably because have you ever i haven't watched it but when i was looking it up it kept popping up i guess like a few years ago there was a movie called water horse that's about like how the loch ness monster got there it's like a little lonely boy finds an egg and a nessie pops out yeah unless it unless it kills him honestly like that I'm not up for, like, heartwarming cryptid movies, like... Yeah, that was a real, like, kind of downer part of the movie when it was very heartwarming, and then at the end, he eats the boy. He does? I haven't seen it, I don't know. I was like, oh, man, interest <laughs> peaked. <laughs> you have to watch it to find out. Uh, I'm the worst, I'm sorry. There's probably a 100% chance he does not eat the kid. Yeah. It probably ends with one of those where he's, like, throwing a rock, being like, get out of here! I don't want you anymore. It's like, yeah. whatever a water horse sounds like. Yep. <laughs> but yeah, about the whole like showing up as a dude, like there's like one or two paintings of them appearing as like a woman and like being very seductive or whatever. But that's not, I wouldn't say not accurate because none of this is real, but, <laughs> but that's I feel what you like think. <laughs> I, I've, I mean, I'm I'm pretty sure. I'm like 99% sure. No. Uh, I read that story on nonfiction Reddit. I'm convinced it's real. <laughs> I'm here to tell you Kelpies are real. Stay away from the water. Don't go in if you see a horse. <laughs> uh, sure, yeah. Don't go in the water. But, I don't know, but some of these humans, because like, you know, the, sometimes they look like a dude. And then other ones, like, uh, one of the tales is about a tall woman dressed in green with a withered, meager countenance ever distorted by a malignant scowl. 
That is so many, like, <laughs> adjectives. I know. Um, <laughs> but it says she overpowered and drowned a man and boy after she jumped out of a stream. So she didn't even mess with the horse stuff. She just jumped straight into it. Um, there's also one Can about <laughs> a Kelpie adopting the guise of a wizened old man who's continually muttering to himself while sitting on a bridge stitching a pair of trousers. And I've seen this one actually a couple times, this trouser dude, where in one of them it says that someone, like, passing by was like, I think that's a Kelpie, and hit him on the back of the head. And then he turned back into a horse and scampered away. And I'm just like, how sure do you have to be when you see kind of like a scruffy dude fixing his pants? And you're like, I think you're a Kelpie, I'm gonna hit you. What if it's just a dude? Yeah, that would be really <laughs> rude. I feel like you're better off just, like, I think that might be a Kelpie. I think I'll go a different way. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> mm-hmm. We don't need to bop him over the head to, like, he's not messing with you. He's just fixing his pants. Let him do his little horsey business. I just want to know, like, where did he learn to to mend with his hooves? From a brownie. <laughs> What's a brownie? Like a Girl Scout? No, there's, oh man, that's another like weird, I'm pretty sure it's Celtic myth. A brownie is like, it's kind of like a fairy, but not. We'll talk about it another time. Or it could just be a, a helpful Girl Scout getting her, her mending patch. Or that. Or that. <laughs> Let's go with that. That's what it is. Yes. He learned it from the brownie Girl Scouts. Uh, and then he ate all of them. And then, <laughs> then he ate all of them. Don't taste like brownies to me. No, 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 no. Let's see. Uh, other accounts describe the Kelpie when appearing in human form as a rough, shaggy man who leaps behind a solitary rider, gripping and crushing him or tearing apart and devouring humans. So that kind of, like, to me, was sort of like Yeti Bigfoot-esque. Scraggy yeah. man crushes you? Like, just squeezes you to death? Like, what is that? Nasty. But I liked this next story about uh about a handsome handsome Kelpie. Sort of, sort of a happy ending. Sort of. Sort of. It's a folktale from Bara and it tells the tale of the lonely Kelpie, um, who transforms himself into a handsome young man to woo a pretty young girl, uh, that it was determined to take for its wife. But the girl recognizes the young man as a Kelpie and removes his silver necklace which is, I guess, his bridal, while he sleeps. And so the Kelpie immediately reverts to its uh, horse form, and the girl takes it home to her father's farm, where it's put to work for a year. And then at the end of the year, the girl rides the Kelpie to consult a wise man who tells her to return the silver necklace. Um, And then, once again transformed into the handsome young man she'd first met, the wise man asks the Kelpie whether, if given the choice, it would choose to be a kelpie or a mortal and the kelpie in turn asks the girl whether if he were a man she would agree to be his wife she confirms that she would after which the kelpie chooses to be a mortal man and the pair are married and then taylor put in parentheses horse girl (laughs) (laughs) yes i just a horse girl wrote this story uh, i just am imagining like like an old kind of like romance novel cover but it's like a kelpie and a lady can you imagine this what's weird is this actually sounds like an opposite gender swapped like version of selkies because selkies are seal girls seal girls yes <laughs> and men will steal their seal skin and that's how they get them to like be their wives or whatever and then but if the girl gets their seal skin back they normally just flee to the ocean <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> which is so funny to me like the idea of like i finally got it back i'm out of here fuck this <laughs> i have so many trains of thoughts and i think of seal girls i just think of like poplio oh no i know don't don't do that to poplio i don't like poplio i love poplio you're gonna be my seal wife poplio or or no <laughs> stop i guess he doesn't even it. say that he'd be like poplio pop poplio Ryan looked up um, stuff on the Kelpies, and he was like, man, so Selkies, he's like, there's, like, a lot of animal brides in mythology. Yeah, it made me think like, of, like, crane wives. Yeah. And there's, like, a, a bunch of different versions, and he was like, it's a little weird. Do you think it's just, like, old tales of, like, bestiality, and they're like, let's make this nicer. It was a lady. She used to be a seal, but now she a lady. <sighs> 
Either that or, like, furries have always been here. (laughs) You know that's true. Furries have always been here. They have. But this is confirmation. I just really want that that cover. He's got like, like I a, mean, there, a little bit of like there are romance novels about kelpies, with, not about kelpies, but about like horse men. Oh yeah, there is that like horse boyfriend dating sim, where it's just like a horse that has a man's face on it. Yep. Mm, man, what a time to be alive. <laughs> <laughs> This is how I know I'm not actually a horse girl, though, because I read this and I'm just like, no, thank you. No, 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 no. I'm, <sighs> I'm perfectly okay. I just like Kelpies because they're scary. I don't like Kelpies because I want to secretly marry one. <laughs> well, no, because I, I like them because they're just not that complicated. It's a scary horse, no. and if you get on its back, it will carry you into the water and drown you and possibly eat you. Yes, it's very, it's, it's elegant in its simplicity. Yeah. And that's what I like. Well, especially, I don't know, I mean, like, you see, like, a weird stranger by the water or something. It is very helpful for, like, keeping kids from, like, wandering in and being like, I can't swim, but maybe I can. Oops, yep. maybe I should have gone to church. Yep. <laughs> kind of thing. Like, you know, it's not like, oh, I saw a weird, like, snake monster or a lizard man or an ape person or something. It's like, it's just a horse, which is something, you know, you might see, like, in the woods wandering by the water and be like, oh, I better stay away. Also, keep you away from strange horses. Maybe it'll bite you. Mm-hmm. Or, like, you know, what's the word? Trample you? Or trample you. I know you have a great fear of being trampled. They're just real big. I don't <laughs> like it. When you said that you heard a lot of stories about people being trampled, like, do you have, like, people in your life who have been trampled? Or was it, like, urban myths about people being trampled? Um, I remember when I wanted to, like, go to that horseback riding thing. At first, I was like, oh, this sounds fun. And my mom was like, well, you have to be really careful because I got thrown off of a horse. And then she told, like, stories about other, like, family members that got thrown off of a horse. And then she had, like, a story about, I think, a classmate that broke their back. And then she told me about Christopher Reed. And then, basically, she just equipped me to be completely terrified of horses for the next rest of my life. I was picturing, like, an actual urban myth where, like, you go into, a like, a bathroom and close the door and you have a candle... Or like a carrot, and you just go like, horse, horse, <laughs> horse, and then a horse appears and it tramples you. No, every every horrible story I've ever heard is normally my mom trying to keep me from doing something dangerous. Basically, she made her own like, urban like legends Grimm and fairy folklore. Tales, yes, but it's just mom's mom's Grimm's fairy tales. I mean, she also convinced us that like. If we answered the door without her there, like, it was probably either the boogeyman or uh, she convinced Caitlin that she had one of those eye books from Hocus Pocus and that when she did bad things, the eye would open. Mm. Basically, she terrorized us to keep us in line, which, I mean, worked. We were very good children. Well, I was. What happens if you cross the street without holding hands? Uh, You die. Mm. You just die. Mm. Mm -hmm. You just drop dead. (laughs) not you don't even get hit by a car or anything no you don't get hit by a car you just die (laughs) Uh, whatever we're alive so i guess it's fine see the next little bit is about kind of what we were talking before about like them being strong and people trying to like harness their their horse power (laughs) their horse power (laughs) you know horse power oh horse power get it (laughs) <laughs> that's what i was laughing at i know i didn't it wasn't on purpose i, I was, uh. <laughs> okay 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 um yeah when a her uh when a horsey when a kelpie appears in its equine persona without any tack it could be captured using a halter stamped with the sign of a cross and its strength could be harnessed in tasks such as transportation of heavy millstones one folktale describes how the Laird of Morphy captured a Selkie and used it to carry stones to build his castle. Which, Excuse you, Kelpie. What'd I say? Selkie. <gasps> oh no, he captured a Kelpie to use it to carry stones to build his castle. Which, by the way, I read like a bunch of different versions of this one, and in almost all of them, the wife is like, please don't do this. This is like a super duper bad idea. And he's like, shh, eat this carrot out of my hand. 
Everything will be fine. He just, he makes bad ideas all the time. Real dumb. But he keeps going with it because he can, you know, he's like, I got this Kelpie and it can carry all my stuff and it's great. And then once the work was completed, uh, the Laird released the Kelpie, which was evidently unhappy about its treatment. I thought that was a very small way to put that. <laughs> um, and it actually, it issued a curse before like slithering off into the lake or whatever that it came from. And I'm glad that they provided a, I guess, like, what happens, because I don't understand the curse. Because I don't know if it's, like, old Gaelic or what, but it just says, Sayer back and Sayer Banes, drive in the Laird or Morphe's stains. The Laird or Morphe will never thrive as Lang's the Kelpie is alive. So basically, as long as the Kelpie is alive, this guy's, like, line will never, never prosper. And so his wife died not too long after the um, castle was done being built, his son died, and his remaining daughter just kept having uh, children that were born with, like, deformities who didn't survive, like, to childhood. That's so sad. All because of his being a dick. Yeah, say, just because of him. They didn't do anything. Except be like, hey, this is a bad idea. Oh, did you like my, my note at the end of the next paragraph? <laughs> 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 yeah. All right, I'm going to read this as God intended, how Taylor typed it. Some Kelpies were said to be equipped with a bridle and sometimes a saddle and appeared invitingly ready to ride. But if mounted, they would run off and drown their riders. If the Kelpie was already wearing a bridle, exorcism might be achieved by removing it. A bridle taken from a Kelpie was endowed with magical properties, and if brandished towards someone, was able to transform that person into a horse or pony. Nice. <laughs> Just as a cinematic werewolves, a Kelpie can be killed by being shot with a silver bullet, after which it is seen to, seen to consist of nothing more than turf and a soft mass like jellyfish, according to an account published by Spence. Uh, when a blacksmith's family were being frightened by the repeated appearances of of a water kelpie at their summer cottage, the blacksmith managed to render it into a heap of starch or something like it by penetrating the spirit's flanks with two sharp iron spears that had been heated in a fire. And I feel like that, there was all sorts of different stuff because there was another thing that said they could be killed, but it was only by cold iron. Yeah, I saw that too. And I was like, this is different. I guess it's just each, like I said, like each story kind of varies in how and what happens like i mean the fact that there's apparently a lonely kelpie that wanted to get married yeah instead who, of eating children who introduced him to like the concept of marriage i don't know i it's like some one day he was just like man you know what is there more to life than luring children onto my back and then eating them while i drown them there's got to be something more he's been reading a lot of like shoujo comics. He watched Beauty and the Beast and he was like, oh my god, I'm Belle. That's me. <laughs> but is he Belle or is he the Beast? Well, I guess she did put him to work. Yep. Which I also thought was kind of like he was still down to get married after she's like, I'm going to steal your necklace and I'm going to make you work for a year. He was like, yes. I guess it worked better than this other guy, the Laird of Morphe. Maybe that was his fetish. Oof. You're welcome for taking it there. No, whatever, it's fine. I mean, he's a horse person, so the whole thing just smacks of... Horse girl. <laughs> <sighs> uh, the next part is just about a, uh, I guess, kind of explaining, like, when you steal the bridle and how it can be used and have, like, supernatural powers. Uh, the early 19th century Kelpie that haunted the woods and shores off of Loch Ness was tacked up with its own saddle and bridle. A uh, fable attached to the notoriously nasty creature said that the Highlander James McGregor, McGregor? McGregor. Uh, taking it by surprise and cutting off the bridle, the source of its power and life, without which it would die within 24 hours. As Whoa. the Kelpie had the power of speech, it attempted unsuccessfully to bargain with McGregor for the return of the bridle. After following McGregor to his home, the Kelpie asserted that McGregor would be unable to enter his house while in possession of the bridle because of the presence of a cross above the entrance door. But McGregor outwitted the creature by tossing the bridle through a window, and so the Kelpie accepted its fate and left, cursing and swearing. 
The myth is perpetuated with further tales of the bridal as it is passed down through the family and referred to as Willock's Ball and Bridal. It has magical powers of healing. A spell was made by placing the items in water while chanting in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And then that water could then be used to cure all sorts of illnesses. Tight. But could it turn you into a horse or pony? That's the real question. (laughs) Can it turn me into a horse? Or a pony. Or a pony. I think I would be a pony. I'm too short to be a horse. I do too. Well, not that. You just have like a pony energy about you. I think that's true. (laughs) I think that's a good, that's a good point. You're like my own little human, I almost said little Nemo. What's that horse everyone loves so much in Parks and Rec? Little Sebastian. Oh, he's a good boy. You're like my very own little Sebastian. Thanks. Nobody knows what's so great about me, but... (laughs) People like me. Everyone I don't knows, know. Except for Ben. So, <laughs> except for Ben. I don't get it. He just doesn't get it. <laughs> but he pretends to, which I appreciate. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, because so nobody, like, goes after him in a mob. That's true. That's true. So, we've gotten to the point where we have some miscellaneous facts about Kelpies. Um, Kelpies can also use their magical powers to summon up a flood in order to sweep a traveler away to their watery grave. Mm-hmm. Which could just be flash floods. and That also. You know, mm-hmm. trying to uh, find a way to explain it. <laughs> Probably. Uh, the sound of a Kelpie's tail entering the water is said to resemble that of thunder. Could be thunder. Also that. Um, if you are... Passing by a river and hear an unearthly wailing or howling, take care. It could be a Kelpie warning of an approaching storm. Which, you know, is kind of nice, I guess, since they're normally just eating people. And in this one, it's like, watch out. It's going to rain later. <laughs> <laughs> Lord. Um, there are Kelpies who steal children, but also Kelpies who steal husbands and wives together or fishermen, or masons to build their chimneys, which I didn't quite understand. I was like, wait, do Kelpies have houses? Yeah, I was like, do they, like, have, like, underwater... Underwater houses? I don't know. How would a chimney work for underwater? I was like, do you light fire? They got Kelpie fire. Kelpie fire. I don't know. Maybe they actually, like, you know, live in houses when they're in their people form. (sighs) I don't know. But that one made me think of one of the stories you found. About the mm-hmm. husband and wife thing that did not get stolen together. No, they did not. <laughs> Some Kelpies can be driven off or defeated by cold iron. And Kelpies are excellent builders. If you capture them and control them with a magical bridle, which by stealing their bridle, uh, they will build mills, bridges, manses, and churches. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Some Kelpies are keen on devouring groups of children all at once, and the horse's back can grow longer and longer to fit all of the children on. How do they, like, keep the children in place? Well, they're they're sticky. It's that whole, like, they become, uh, once you touch them, they become, like, adhesive. And that's why they get stuck on their backs and they can't get off. I was wondering if he's, like... I don't know, they, like, absorb the children, like, in through the back and then just, like, spit out the bones. Pew, that pew, would be pew, really pew, frightening. Pew. Or if, like, what if his, like, horse neck just, like, bends back and he just chomp, 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 chomp. Ugh. Nasty. Okay. So, do we want to do recent evidence and then, or do, I guess we should do recent sightings and then evidence and then stats? Yeah, well, I liked that just because this was on, like, a weird, almost kind of, like, cryptid Pokemon type website and I just like that the stats stats are pretty much blank because we don't have any information because they're not real. How do we not know their diet? They eat children. Like, what? (laughs) I don't know. The stats. Classification. Water horse. Size. Large horse. Weight. Unknown. Diet. Children. They say unknown but it's children. Location. It's children. Movement. Swimming and walking. Environment. Turbulent areas of locks and rivers. And that's it. That's what's on their Pokemon card. Yep. Cool moves. Chomp. Cool moves. Sticky back. (laughs) Residue. Residue. But yeah, everything I could find about... Becca actually found a thing, but I just couldn't really find anything about, like, modern reports. It seemed like it was all just strictly folklore and anything that could be attributed 
two Kelpies just turned into more, like, dinosaur-like monsters because sometimes, not Kelpies, but just water horses in general are described as, like, horse top and then kind of, like, a long snake body kind of thing. Yeah. So that makes me think of Loch Ness. And so we just don't really see a lot of people who actually think they've seen a Kelpie, like a scary horse, because mm-hmm. it's not real. Nope. So some local Kelpie legends from uh, Scotland, and I found these all on a uh, website that is, well, we'll provide a link, but uh, it was Scotland's local Kelpie myth map by Floris Books. Um, so the first one that I like tagged was uh, Rasay, or R-A-A-S-A-Y. Um, Lochnamina, N-A space M-N-A, is on a wee island to the east of Skye, and it was the home of a Kelpie who ate a local girl. The girl's father set a trap for the Kelpie by luring it with the scent of roasting sheep and managed to kill it with hot iron. This is one of the few Kelpie legends in which the Kelpie is killed rather than just driven off. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see, a Kelpie's lock, which, I mean, when you name it that, you know you're going to get Kelpies. Yeah. So. Let's just be real for a second. Yeah. Uh, local legend surrounding this lock near Ord tells of a young married couple who were pursued by a Kelpie. The woman couldn't run as fast as the man due to her long skirts, so she was caught and carried off as her husband saved his own skin. What a dick. Rude. Maybe he thought she was still, like, right behind him. I doubt that. Yeah, he is probably just just scared cat. Um, these next two, one is at River Ugi, uh, or Uji, I don't know, U-G-I-E, um, and a Kelpie is responsible for building the bridge that crosses this river at, uh, Enverugi, according to a local legend, and then in Marnock, um, a Kelpie was responsible for building the mill here, so, building stuff! Hell Yeah. Uh, the Shiel Mill Bridge, I don't know if it's Shiel Mill or Shiel Mill, it's S-H-E-I-L-M-I-L-L. Uh, long ago, a man was crossing the river using the bridge near Forfar when the horse he was riding started to lure, turn into a monstrous Kelpie. Did they do like a bait and switch? Did he just, had he always had a Kelpie? I don't know, I guess. Oof. Uh, the man leapt off the horse as quickly as he could and swam to shore. The angry Kelpie, deprived of his prey, threw a rock at the escaping man. <laughs> So petty. The rock missed, but the Kelpie's hoofprint on the rock is still visible to this day. Spooky. How did it get there? How did it throw a rock? It's got hooves. It burnt it into the rock. Just picked it up with its two its two hooves. I just imagine, mm-hmm. like, the dude standing on the shore and the Kelpie, like, in the river, like, trying to grab a rock and it drops it a couple times. <laughs> and the guy on the shore is like, no, no, here, no. Just grab it like this. He's like, like this? Like, yeah. (laughs) Perfect. That's how it went down in my brain. (laughs) That's, I mean, that seems accurate. Um, The last one is Glen Ogle. Uh, The local Kelpie legend of Glen Ogle tells of a beautiful white horse by a dark lock. The little boys playing by the lock were amazed when the horse grew longer and longer so they could all sit on its back. And then the horse and the boys vanished into the dark water. So a lot of these stories are very similar and stuff, but it's just interesting because each little, like, area has their own, like, Kelpie legend, which I think is really cool. Mm -hmm. But, hmm. Cool except people are dead. Well, you know. (laughs) They died a long time ago. It's whatever. I just, it's another one of those things, like, where little kids, I'm just blown away by the fact that they could see a horse that just gets longer and they're not, like... Oh, no. Oh, no. I should get out of here and send me like, this is awesome. I I get first first ride. I mean, I think kids today would be like, that's possessed. But kids back then were like, I've never brushed my teeth. Where's... <laughs> we, we use bark to brush our teeth. We... I've never showered. Also, uh, I, I don't know. Like, just not... They're... They're like farmers and... I blame the medieval school system. <sighs> yes. They're not They're not doing a whole lot of, like, critical thinking. If only they you know had, I mean? like, an after-school program. Like, you know, kind of like D.A.R.E., but for cryptids. Care. 
Ah, oh, perfect. <laughs> you see a seal girl? Just say no. Just say no. I know you want her to be your wife. But <laughs> just say no. Uh, that's just sick. You need like better speed dating or something. People trying to marry seals and Kelpies trying to marry people. You'd think they'd have enough within their own, like, cryptid dating pool, but I guess not. Well, I don't know, because that was one thing I tried to find, because I know we kind of skipped over it because there wasn't a whole lot, but the only one I could find any information on, like, how they propagate was water bowls. Because water bowls will actually make new water bowls with an actual cow, just a regular cow. I read that about uh, water horses too, or not water horses, uh, kelpies that they would they would um, reproduce with like a cow or a steer, and I was like, why not a horse? Yeah, I didn't but understand okay. that. I kept trying to find. I was like, how did they make more? Because then in the water horse movie, it's an egg. So do they lay eggs? Where egg come from? What kind of sex education is this? I just what came first, the kelpie or the egg? I don't know. It's just Nobody knows. Satan plus egg equal kelpie. Yeah. I don't know. I just want to know how they make more. If they just just pop out of the water or Maybe that's why we haven't what. seen any. <laughs> they're they're all extinct. So sad. <laughs> Gosh. But so yeah, so I couldn't find anything on on that and I was very interested and and I just want to know what kind of search terms, what kind of, you know, search engine optimization do we have to do for kelpies so I can find out how we make more kelpies. These are the questions that matter, Mm -hmm. honestly. I want my own Jurassic Park of Kelpies. Ugh. That seems somehow much worse than Jurassic Park. I'm going to find a mosquito from from Scotland trapped in amber, and I'm either going to grow a Nessie or I'm going to grow a Kelpie. Let's hope you grow Nessie and not a Kelpie, (laughs) just for your own safety. There. Mm. Um, okay, horse girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Becca used her internet sleuth skills to find a a nonfiction encounter. Yeah, these people think it was a a selkie, and I was like, "This is not a selkie. Y'all are stupid." Okay, so I found this it's a supposedly nonfiction modern encounter from reddit.com slash r the truth is here it's a database for nonfiction encounters with the unknown from a personal source so their whole thing is literally like don't make up shit here like if you want to make up shit go to creepypasta or or you know a different subreddit don't come here the personal source is in italics so you know it's real yeah, they're serious. I don't know. This is probably not true, but they were miss they were miss like guessing what it could be. So part of me says this might be real because people are stupid. So this is by uh this is a story by Snogbox and he posted it or she posted it 2 years ago. Okay. I have a super vivid memory from when I was really young, like 6 to 8. I lived on Long Island and my parents took me and my little brother to the beach all the time. I grew up around oceans and water, so my parents trusted me to run around the shore without too much supervision as long as I didn't swim where I couldn't touch the bottom. Uh, I remember I was collecting shells and rocks on the bay while my mom was feeding my little brother, and I climbed around these huge brown rocks that were halfway in the water. There was a boy who looked a little older than me sitting in the middle of the rocks. I didn't really think it was weird because I was like seven, and I just asked him, asked him what he was doing. He didn't say anything, but he smiled and picked up a few shells from the water and put them in my bucket. Uh, When he came more into the light, he looked super pale, almost light blue, and his hair looked like green, clumpy seaweed. Uh, His eyes were huge and black, but I was taught it's rude to comment on what people look like, so I didn't say anything. I just hopped off the rocks into the shallow water, but he followed me. He said something to me, but it wasn't in English, and he just kept going into the deeper water and bringing me cool shells. Uh, My mom called for me to leave, and I said bye to the kid and thanks for the shells and walked up to the shore to my mom. I told her about the boy, but she said she didn't see anyone even though she was watching me. I don't know. I did have a pretty active imagination as a kid, but I remember this so vividly. I'm really into mythology now as an adult, and I can't help but think that maybe he was some sort of water fairy or merperson or something. Maybe just a weird boy who was good at swimming and needed a hairbrush. 
Uh, my mom not seeing him could mean I imagined him or that the whole thing about fairies only letting children see them. Um, and so a lot of the comments suggested it was a selkie, but I mean, selkies, one, aren't known for luring people to their death or trying to get them into the water. And they're also like, they normally look like seals. Like, that's what they look like. Mm -hmm. And I thought it might be a Kelpie like trying to appear as a small male child trying to lure another child into deep waters because i don't know why not but it could be anything honestly and it also could just be this kid had a wild imagination but yeah i thought it was interesting that it was in uh it was in the states yeah that too instead of in in scotland but i don't know maybe they're coming stateside and like let's play a new game we're kids now no more handsome dudes Let's just be babies, because babies are dumb. Give them some yep. shells, and then eat them. Yep. <laughs> That's the MO. Although I was kind of... I feel like on the other stories, usually when they drag people into the water, they're in horse form. Yeah. So I was kind of like, if he's... I mean, maybe it was one of those lonely Kelpies. Maybe. He just wanted a friend. Check out these sweet shells. <laughs> you want to hang out forever? I like that they suggested you needed a hairbrush. And I was like, dude, if your hair is seaweed, like, a hairbrush isn't going to do anything. You're just going to have shredded seaweed. <laughs> this is my new hairdo. <laughs> it's mm. sh- shredded. I'm into that seaweed hair. I want that. I want, like, mm. dark green hair. I want to look like a swamp person. I want dark green hair, too. And I thought about it for a long time. And then I was like, but what would that look like? I realized that, like, I'd have to color my eyebrows in really dark for it to look right. And I was like, I don't think it would look right on me. It would look good. It would look good on you because you have dark eyebrows and dark eyelashes. Hell yeah, But I, I think it would look weird on me. You could just kind of do that look like where, like, make your eyebrows even lighter. Just get rid of them. No, <laughs> no, no. Then I will look like a little pink egg with green hair. I love eggs. I'll look like a little alien. I love aliens. Yeah, but I don't think everyone would love it. Someone would see you and then they would go onto this board and be like, I think I just saw an alien mer person <laughs> at Trader Joe's. She was cursing about them not having vegan orange chicken morsels. <laughs> she's, she's really pissed. <laughs> I got away because I was scared. I thought she would abduct me and turn me into orange chicken morsels. <laughs> That's my... I'm a cryptid, and that's what I do. (laughs) Perfect. Nice. Anyways, that's pretty much all we have on Kelpies, right? Yeah, that's all I could really find. Most of the stuff that would pop up, like you said, it's all really similar, like, which I guess is kind of nice. It's consistent. Yep. I mean, it makes it easy to, like, talk about, Mm -hmm. because there's not a whole lot of variation. Yeah, and they're not real. (sighs) Yeah, they're not real. (laughs) This is one of those, like, it's interesting to learn about, but I'm not really worried about it. Like, if I see a horse out in the wild, I'm just going to be more worried about, like, you know, it biting me and me getting, like, horse flu than it turning into, like, a, you know, horse demon and drowning me. See, that's your first mistake. That's what all of these children and husbands and wives, that's that was their mistake. They were like, it's just going to bite me, if anything. And then the horse was like, okay, well, look, I'm super sweet. You want to get on my back? And they're like, "Mm, I mean. Is it talking to them? Yeah. Okay. Well, is that their second mistake then? Is that they're talking to a horse and not thinking it's weird? I mean, probably. And then its back starts to stretch and they're like, well, this is pretty cool. And they get on it. Kelpies. So I guess we're going to close the book on Kelpies. Kelpies are done. They're not real. Unless you've had an experience with a mysterious horse approaching you at the, uh, in Scotland. I mean, if you have one of those stories, please tell me. I want it to be real. I mean, I don't, but I do. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Let us know if you're a recovering horse girl. Uh, actually don't let us know that. I feel like you probably stopped listening after you were shamed so horribly (laughs) throughout this entire episode. I was horse girl adjacent. Okay. Okay. Close enough. Horse girls. (laughs) Anyways. Mm -hmm. Do you want to do any plugs or anything or you just want to chop it? Uh, Maybe I'll do a Kelpie pin. (laughs) What is it going to look like? There's your plug. 
it's going to be just creepy looking. It's going to have like seaweed in its mane. And it's going to say, I'm not a horse girl at the bottom. <laughs> just so that way people are like, oh, it's a Kelpie. It's not that you're just a horse girl. I see. You can say like, I'm not your horse girl. And it'll be like winking. Yeah, I'm not your horse girl. That's good. That's a good, good pin idea. Or just not Copyright. your horse girl. Not, yes. Not your, not horse, your horse girl. girl. TM. That's perfect. Okay. Well. This one just. Tell people where to find us. Yep. You can find us on Podbean. You can find us on iTunes, YouTube, uh, at Ghost Emoji. You can find us on Twitter uh, at Ghost Emoji Show. Yeah. Download it. Tell your friends about it. Review us on iTunes. Anything you can do to spread the good word that we are telling excellent spooky stories and uh, reviewing spooky movies and keeping people safe from water demons. Yeah. I mean, we're doing you a favor, so if you could do us a favor, that would be super. The more you know. Mm-hmm. Yep. About horse demons. That's what I'm here for. Well, that's going to do it for us for, for Kelpies. So until next week, stay spooky. <laughs> <sighs> Bye. Bye.